Today's video is sponsored by Go Markets. Go Markets is a multi award winning broker who is regulated by the Financial Service Commission. Myself and the BD members have been using Go Markets for over seven years now. They go above and beyond to support the BD community and their traders. They offer award winning customer support, thousands of tradable products, and some of the lowest spreads in the industry. This is perfect if your style of trading is scalping like mine. If you're interested in signing up to Go Markets, please use the link in the description below. Thank you and enjoy today's video. Welcome to part three of Mastering Trend Trading. This video is by far the most important video you will ever watch and it is a skill that you probably will never learn. And the reason being is because you have an intention spam of around 10 seconds. When I was out at the weekend, and I do this all the time, and I'm sure you do it, and everything you notice other people doing it. How many people do you see sitting there, bored in a queue in a supermarket or down the pub or somewhere, and they're constantly scrolling through TikTok, through Instagram, through Facebook, and you can see them. They literally look at something for about two seconds and they scroll, and then they scroll, and they scroll. They don't actually sit and learn anything because they've got no attention span. And I always think to myself that the next generation that comes up is absolutely ruined, like ruined. You can't sit there, and they've got no chance because you can't sit there and focus for that long on learning something. It's just they're looking what everyone else is doing and they just want to quickly, you know, change strategy or jump ship, which is funny because, I know I'm going on about, I mean, I'm going on, but I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and he said, Jamie, I've tried every strategy out there. It's not working for me. Can the BD help me? And I said, there's a difference between trying and learning, right? I can try tennis. It doesn't mean I'm going to be good at tennis, but I'm sure if I put the time and effort in and if I wanted to, I could become a very good tennis player. Do you want to be a good tennis player? Not really. I don't really like tennis, so I don't put the effort in, but it's the same with trading, okay? There's a difference between trying and learning. If you actually learn the strategy and learn why you're not profitable with it, then you will become uh, as, you know, consistent and successful at it. If you constantly learn different things, I mean, try different things, it ain't going to get anywhere. You know, you can try anything. It doesn't mean you're going to be good at it, right? But it's when you understand or go and understand why you're not good at it. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing different? And that's all to do with this here, learning and managing trades, money and trade management. I have taught thousands of people on one-on-one -on -one webinars. I think I've well or had well over a thousand webinars. Literally, I'm fully booked every single week. But every single webinar I have had, it has always been the same problem, emotion, every single time. Everyone out there can trade. Every single person out there understands the basics, the fundamentals. But when it comes to the actual chart time, like actually going to place the trade, that's when all the dreams fail. That's when everyone starts panicking. They don't know how to manage the trade. They, they panic because the trade's in drawdown. They don't, where, don't know where to put their stop loss. They don't know where to put their take profit. They're not confident in their trading ability. And they start doubting themselves. They start panicking. They start looking at other people and think, right, am I doing the right thing? That person's winning. I'm not. What am I doing? You know, and it's just a downhill spiral. The difference between me and you lot is I'm confident with my trading decision and it starts here. I know what to do in every situation. I've done it before and I have the confidence knowing I'm doing the right thing. If I get a loss, it makes no difference. I follow religiously my set of rules, right? And you do that by writing it down and you repeat it over and over and over again, right? If you are having a loss or you have a bad day, you have to know what to do in that situation. So many people, right, don't learn that and they don't do that. They try a strategy. It doesn't work. They might perhaps have a good few trades. They might get, you know, five winning trades in the row. They're a bit confident. They go to live trading and then they start losing some trades and they panic. They don't know what to do. What do I do? Because they've never been in that situation before where if you spend the time learning, documenting it, trading journals, I'm sure you've heard it before. I know it's boring stuff, but that is how, what builds confidence. So let's go over some of the results today. I'm going to show you how I managed a particular trade. I actually have had a loss, um, actually had two losses actually, but then I got it back on three beautiful winners, which I'm going to break it down for you, okay? And it wasn't because I panicked, oh, I've got a loss, 
It's because I knew what to do, right? I did the exact same thing. I knew the strategy gave me an edge. I just religiously at the same time, that doesn't make sense. I just basically entered a trade when my arrow appeared, uh, but I knew and had the confidence it was going to win. But let me explain to you right. Okay, so let's first of all go on the charts. Um, so these are some of the trades today. Uh, let's go to the bottom here. I'm going to break down. Um, hold on here. We'll go to the bottom here. So we're going to break down USD Chef. We're going to break down NZUSD. This is what we're going to go over in today's video. Um, I just want to show you some trades. Uh, so that BD member took a buy on GPUSD. Uh, for, feels good. First ever trade with the Mogwai strategy. Still using the RSI. 1.5% made on my 100 challenge account. Again, we're going to break all these setups down. 9% made, six wins, one loss. Uh, GU on the one minute time frame, it went to a one to two and it is still rising by the looks of it. I accidentally closed it off at a one to one. There you go there. Okay. This is what I'm trying to explain to you, right? This here is where the dreams fall apart because everybody's like, right, I'm on the charts. I know what to do. And then when it starts to come about managing trades, right, holding trades, closing trades off early, moving your stop loss to break even, right? That's the part where people start to panic because they haven't done it before. They haven't built the confidence up. Let me explain to you, right? We're going to make it simple. We're not going to talk about man risking 1%, 5% because I was going to talk about a position size calculator explain to you how to risk 1% per trade. You know, the reason why I'm not going to show you this is because I've taught a lot of people and I've realized over the years that when we talk about risk, I'm going to risk 1%, 2%, People are different. People have different levels of risk. Your views and opinion are going to be different to mine. Your risk tolerance is different to mine. When I say I'm going to risk 1%, you know, you know that. You don't need me to tell you that risking 1% is the safer option. If you want to risk risk 5% of your account, that's totally up to you. When you burn and you blow your account, it's going to hurt, but that's the only way you're going to learn. OK, so, you know, always risk one percent if you don't know how to do it. Use things like position size calculators. You can get trade managers in Ctrader. Trading View has the exact same. You know, MT4, you can get trade managers. It allows you to risk one percent. To give an example here, if I take a buy on EURUSD, my uh, account is in Greater British Pound. I have a £100,000 funded account and I want to risk one percent and my stop loss is 20 pips. It tells me that my lot size is going to be 6.19 lots. That means if I lose this trade at a 20 pip stop loss, I'll be losing a thousand pound. That is how you risk one percent, okay? If I change that stop loss to 20, uh, 50 pips, okay, notice my risk stays the same. My lot size is bigger now, but my risk stays the same at 1%. And the reason being is because my lot size changes, okay? It's a very simple thing. Now, let me show you my trades, okay? So those are my trading results, okay? You can see here, we made a thousand pounds. You can see here, it says day. You can see those two losses just there and you can see all the blues. What we're gonna focus on is that one just there, that NZUSD, okay? So let's just go over the trades that I took and it, this here, if you sit and learn this, this is what's gonna make you consistent. If you are trading, any trend trading strategy, like the Mogwai reversal strategy, it is a trend trading strategy. So have the confidence that you are going to, have the confidence that this strategy is going to work for you because it will. Trend trading, there is nothing bad about it at all. Nothing bad, right? What's bad about trading with a trend? Nothing. You're trading with the momentum. You're trading with other traders. You're trading with the trend. It means you can have a good risk reward ratio. You can make some good pips, you know, 1%, 2%, 5%, 10%. 10 you can ride trends, okay? You can bring in trailing stop losses. You can make risk free trades. It doesn't matter if your entry point is crap, okay? I mean, give an example here. If I just bring up a chart 
Okay, here we go here, right? So it doesn't matter. Look, uptrend, pullback, uptrend, pullback, uptrend. It doesn't matter if your entry point is rubbish. It doesn't matter if you bought there. It doesn't matter if you bought there. It doesn't matter if you bought here. Because we're trading with the trend, right? Eventually, the trade's going to win. You get your stop loss out of the way. The reason why we do that is because you don't want to get stopped out. If you want to win trades, how do you win trades? By not getting stopped out, okay? So get your stop loss out of the way. Trade with the trend. Can't go wrong. If you have tight stop losses, you will get stopped out. And the problem that with then is you start chasing trades, right? And you don't want to chase trades because you've had a loss and you've had a loss because you had a tight stop loss. So if you can avoid the losses by using a wider stop loss, and I'm not talking wide stop loss like down here, I'm talking a sensible one, okay? Not a tight one like two pips because, you know, you'd be surprised though, a lot of people use two pips. Right, okay, so let me just, first of all, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over NZUSD. Right, so I took this trade. I took this trade today, okay? You've seen the results on my phone. This was the trade just... Um, here, this was the trade. That's the trade that I took just there, okay? We're gonna go over this exact trade, okay? So let's say, let's just look at price, okay? This here is the first trade that I took, okay, on NZUSD. It was an uptrend, okay? We had created higher highs, okay? It had created higher lows. So for me, this was a beautiful trade with the trend. We had the Mogwai signal, okay, which had confirmed an uptrend. So above the moving average, we created higher highs, higher lows. We've got a Mogwai arrow. Hello, we're with the trend. Let's wait for the pullback and we'll buy with the trend, wouldn't it? Logical, simple, doesn't need to be complicated, right? So let's look, let's zoom in here, right? Let's zoom in. Okay, so now we've pulled back on the MACD just there, okay? So literally, I entered the trade round here. I put a seven pip stop loss out of the way. Thank you very much, right? And again, it's not nice, it's not tight, it doesn't need to be tight. Nice and seven pip stop loss, okay. Then what happened was, did the trade go seven pips? No. So I got to around, I just wanna show you, it went to around 4.5 pips, okay? Well, okay, 4.5 pips, nothing happened, price ended up stopping me out, okay? Which was right, quite annoying, but it is what it is. I'm just gonna slow this down here, okay. So, I ended up getting stopped out on the trade just there, okay? It is what it is. I've lost 1% now. So let's document that. I've lost 1%, okay? So now I look at this here and I just zoom out, right? And look at it logically, right? Because we're focusing on the trend. Doesn't need to be complicated. Doesn't need to be complicated. Chart time should be fun time. The hard part is you, the emotion, the panicking, right? Which we'll work on. This is the whole point, okay? So, what's happened? We've been stopped out. We've lost 1%. Is price in an uptrend? It's still going sideways, okay? However, if I mark up the previous high and I mark up the previous low, it looks like here we have just broken that low. So, in the back of my mind now, I'm now thinking we're going down. We're now below the EMA, okay, which is fine. We're now low, going into a downtrend. So, perhaps we're looking for a downtrend and a pullback. That would make logical sense. That would be nice. I, I can now get my loss back on NZUSD. That would be nice. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Okay, so price does come down. Okay, price does come down. Okay, now it looks like it's pulled back somewhere. It looks like it's pulled back literally to this area of resistance just there. You can see here, trend down, pull back perhaps sell with the trend, okay? However, there is no entry point at the minute because I need the MACD to go oversold, so at the minute, or overbought, so at the minute we have nothing, okay? There you go there, okay? So prices looks like it's going back up here, so there is no trade. Let me just uh, mute my, uh, oh, I can't mute it, okay? So still going sideways, but I've got a funny feeling now we're probably going to go lower because same again, we haven't created a higher high. This is not a higher high, that's equal highs. But what we have created is a lower low because there's the previous low. So it looks like slowing down now, it's probably going to come down. 
Same again, I'm not in a trade, I'm just sitting here waiting, da 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 you know, as we are, we are patient traders. We're either going to break to the upside or we're going to break to the downside here. Okay, so price comes down, okay, and again, this is where it comes down to patience, discipline, confidence. We know what we're looking for now, right? It looks like here, you see here, see how we've just broken this one here? That one broke this one, okay? So you can see here now, I'm adding structure to this mess. We've got a low, we've got a new low, and we've just created a lower low. Hello, it's clearly going down, right? That is it. So now I'm pretty confident we are going to be trending down, okay? So it looks like now the MACD, I just need a Mogwai signal to confirm a downtrend, which it just has. So we now have the EMA, we now have a downtrend confirmed by a Mogwai arrow. I just need the MACD to go overboard to confirm the pullback. And I'm riding this trend, baby. I'm going to ride it all the way down. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so it looks like it's kind of created a little double bottom pattern. Okay, it's going lower. It's going lower as well. Okay, now I've got another Mogwai arrow. Okay, so now I'm going to wait for another pullback. Hopefully we get another pullback and the MACD goes overboard because you want a, you want a Mogwai arrow pullback right? Not Mogwai arrow price doing nothing and then pull back. Mogwai arrow pull back. Mogwai arrow pull back. Yeah? Okay? So now we've got, oh, look, look, look at this. Yes. Now we've got a trend down. Now we've got a Mogwai pulling back. Okay? I just need to wait for that TCA line just to change colour. Okay? You ready? Hold on. Bang, just there. In fact, I would I actually entered this trade just before that green that candle there. I entered this trade just before that candle there. Okay. So I can't remember exactly what my stop loss and take profit was. I'll work it out in the back of my mind. In fact, I probably would do if I looked at the pictures, but I'm not going to show you. Um, but what I did was same again is I put my stop loss out of the way. Okay, that, that's nine pips. Okay, there you go there, 10 pips. So 10 pip stop loss. So 10 pip stop loss, okay? And we're going to go for 20 pip take profit, okay? 20 pip take profit, okay? Now, bear in mind, I've already lost 1%, remember? I've already lost 1%, okay? So I'm now in a trade. I'm now in a trade, okay? 10 pip stop loss, 20 pip take profit, but I've set a 10 pip stop loss. It doesn't matter, okay? Because this trade um, nearly loses. So anyway, next trade, right? Price does nothing. Now it goes higher. Now I'm thinking to myself, right, okay, am I going to get stopped out? Is this going to be my trading done for the day? I've lost 1%. I've lost another 1% if this one loses. Let's see what happens. Okay, now it looks like price as, hold on here, I literally entered, ready? There. Just there. That was it. Now I'm looking at this here, right? And again, this what is what comes with, this is about learning the strategy. You would have done this 8 million times in simulation, in demo, to know what you need to do in this situation. You cannot be taught this. You cannot build that experience, that confidence on knowing what to do in this situation because I'm on my back foot at the minute because I've lost 1%. I'm now in another trade that can possibly stop me out. So this is what I do. I close this trade off early. I close this trade off at five pip loss. So I have not lost 1% at 10 pips. I close it off at five pips. You can see here, look, you see five pips. I close this trade off at five pips. So I've closed this trade off early in a loss. So I'm now down 1.5%. But I've done this because I can re-enter at a better price. This, this still meets the rules. We've still got the MACD overbought. It has gone overbought again. It hasn't touched the EMA. It is still a valid entry point. It is re-entering the market at a better entry point. It is still a downtrend, okay, until anything tells me different. So same again, I re-enter this trade. And just to show you, right, look, just to show you, uh, this is that, hold on, I'll, do, I'll show you here. This is that loss, NZUSD, I closed it off early. 
You can see where I closed it off. You can see where I re-entered the trade, okay? So like I said, this isn't looking stuff in hindsight. This legit did happen, okay? So now I re-enter the trade here, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for an 8-pip stop loss now, 8 pips. So because I've lost 1.5%, I realistically need around... Uh, you know, 16 pips to make profit, okay? So what I actually do is I sit here like this here and I watch the trade, okay? And I think, right, okay, where is 16? Hold on here, what we'll do is enter it here, okay? Put it up here, there, here, okay? Now, what's happened here? Watch the trade. As it goes up like this here, as it comes down, so it will come down, it will come down, hold on here, bang, okay? So give me a sec here, boom. So as the trade starts to come down like this here, what I start to do is as the trade comes down is I start to take profit away from this trade. So you can see here, right? I can't remember exactly what my stop loss and take profit was, okay? So I'm not saying it was eight pips. I'm just using that as an example. It could have been five, but I generally can't remember, right? But you see here, you see how I close off percentage of the trade. So see here, NZUSD sell, four lots. NZUSD sell, 3.5 lots. And then I close off NZUSD sell, 0.5 lots. Okay, so you can see here, as the trade is going down into profit, I start to move that stop loss down. Make this trade risk free. Try and ride the trend, okay? Because at the minute, I'm already took profit on this. This will eventually, I mean, this came to a point where it was risk free. Just imagine now, right? I've, I mean, I closed the trade off. Uh, I, I actually closed the trade off. Um, hold on here. Here. So this is where I close the trade off at the Mogwai arrow there, as soon as the MACD went back oversold. That's where I closed. Yeah, so there you go. I didn't actually have an eight pips. That, that was my stop loss, whatever that was. As soon as the arrow appeared, right? So let's see where the arrow appears. Bang. This here is where I closed it off. Boom. Thank you very much. Now, now I've made profit. I'm in a risk-free trade. Whatever happens now, I'm in a risk-free, I've made my 1.5% back, I'm now in a risk-free trade, this can either go, go flying all the way to where, uh, you know, I don't know, 100 pips, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if it stops me back out, look what's happening, just keep riding it down, move that stop-loss break-even, then into profit, keep riding it and riding it and riding it down, this is is so easy to do in simulation, but in reality, it's so goddamn hard to do because it's confidence, right? It's about knowing what to do in that situation. I'll give you an example of some trades uh, that I also took today. Um, let me try and find you, GPUSD. There's that buy that BD member took. Um, try and find you here, Aussie US dollar, was there any buys on Aussie US dollar, nope, okay, trying to find you something, uh, what's this, USD CAD, uh, okay, we're in an uptrend, I mean, look at this one here, <coughs> look at this one here, I wonder if anybody took this, I wonder if any BD member took this, so look at this one, right, same again, we're above the EMA, we've got a Mogwai arrow, confirms uptrend, right? Look at this. We wait for the pullback. Where's the pullback? By the MACD. The MACD crosses over. So here is the pullback, right? We enter this trade as soon as we close above the TCA line. Watch this one, okay? So same again. I want to put my stop loss out of the way. We've confirmed it's an uptrend. So let's enter the trade there. When I say stop loss, I mean the stop loss out of the way. So let's go with 7.5 pips, okay? Let's go with 8 pips just to be safe. So 8 pips stop loss. The trade has to go a minimum 8 pips, right? Let's see what happens. The trade goes to 6.1 pips and then reverses. Well, I'm still in the trade. Now the trade goes to 8 pips. So as soon as that trade has done a one-to-one -one just there, 
I now close off 60% uh, of the trade. I move that stop loss to break even. And then I just keep riding it all the way up. I keep riding it all the way up. Okay. I mean, I'm getting very close to a one to two now. I'm at 12 pips. Okay. If I have a 16 pip take profit, because that would be a one to two, I'm very close. I'm not far off. Four pips from that. Okay. And that is it. That's how you ride the trend. Like I said, if you have the confidence, right, you can get some absolute beautiful setups with the trend. Now, I'm going to leave that there because, like I said, I'm going for 24 hours. 24 hours. I'm going for 24 minutes. You lot won't watch the rest of this because you have an atten attention spam of a goldfish. But yeah, hope you enjoyed today's video. My name is Jamie Palmer.